somebody asked us to come and live in their house and we actually at that point didn't know where we were going to live. We had nowhere to live. <laughs> we were living in a camper van. <laughs> And we're very happy. We love it here. <laughs> we just really love it. I mean, look, look at the view. <laughs> it's a view to die for. My great-grandfather and the grandfather and his brothers moved to the Tain area in the late 20s. They came out here to Ardmore and to Dooney in the early 30s then. Kind of been here ever since. He started a dairy in, in Erdmore. They worked that for a, for a number of years and then just went on to beef cattle. Now we've got the pond. That's a very <laughs> special place to go and sit, you know. Wonderful. Uh, it's very still at the moment, so you sit there and you've got all the reflections in the water, and because the water's still, it calms you down. What's he doing? He's taking He's... a video, I think. Oh, okay. That's, that's the object of the exercise at the moment. He doesn't want us to say anything intelligent or anything. I don't well, you can, well, you can, you can if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing for me is the garden, which was so lovely. Yes. Zoma has oh, always yeah. been a keen yeah. gardener. Yes. I do pots and vegetables. Not very well. <laughs> With farming on the shore here, and we've always tried to farm environmentally with nature. Um, so, I mean, even just now, you we're standing on the shoreline, you're hearing curlews and, and uh, sandpipers, the oyster catcher or mussel pickers, as we tend to call them, the calling down there. It's it's. Uh, keeping nature to the to the forefront. Well, we're Christians, so we believe in God being able to say jump and you just say, Yes boss, how high <laughs> I woke up at four o'clock one morning and uh, I couldn't think why I was awake because nothing was bugging me. But there was, I thought, it's God, it's God in the room. <laughs> uh, it was quite weird really. But God was saying, I want you to move to the UK. And I said, no, that's not a good idea, boss. <laughs> but however, after a while, about an hour of me arguing with God in the end, if you've given your life to God, you might say yes. Ardmore and Dooney were both very large farms in, in, in Edirland, which, which in the late 20s were, were broken up into agricultural holdings for returning servicemen primarily. So, I mean, in my feeling, that, that needs to happen again. We, we need, need young families and not just Edirland, but ac across, across the Highlands. It's just, I mean, we're still, I suppose when you look at it, we're, we're uh, 200 years on, we're still suffering the effects of the clearances. We're with, with empty straths and, and communities that have never, never been, been filled, or never been filled with young families again. Edgerton in the 70s, 
you know, we had a post office, well, even later than the 70s, we had a post office, we had the shop, we even had petrol pumps outside the shop at one point, uh, and the pub, um, all of which is gone now, which, which does take the heart out of a community as well. You've, uh, that will all change again. We'll, we'll, we'll get there again. That was me and my... On my high horse there, but <laughs> you can you can edit a lot of that. <laughs> but it, it was just uh, things that yeah. thing I feel uh-huh. passionate oh. about, you know. It's a One of the neighbours was over almost immediately to say welcome. Uh, and said, you know, we don't live in each other's pockets, but we're always here for each other. And that was really very special. That's good. Yeah. Just lovely to live in that kind of a community. (laughs) Well, you know, I'm a slow learner. (laughs) Yes, you are. Can't have everything, you know. No, can't have beauty and intelligence as well. No, I was going to say. No, that won't do it. Okay. What's the secret to growing old? (laughs) Don't do old. (laughs) Because the day you start thinking of yourself as old is the day you will actually become old. And you see that quite often with men. you know, they retire at 65, and suddenly they're little old men. Um, and my father, my, partly it's with me, it's genes. Because my father was going to the gym three times a week at 96. So, um, and he died at 100, renewing his driving license uh, two days before his birthday. And he was still looking at the ladies too at a hundred. It's quite a character. Mm. Earliest memories in the school would have been uh, and I went to Edgerton Primary in in the late sixties, and had Miss Montgomery as a teacher initially, and then had your grandfather Kenny Gollan, Rory. He, so, yes, had had fond memories in the in the school. Friday afternoons are always special. Um, if you're unlucky, it was a um, manually spreading the dung that my father had dumped up, up in your your grandfather's uh, garden for for gardening. But sometimes uh, Kenny would take the older boys out in the firth in his boat on a Friday afternoon. Which, when you look back now, there was himself and maybe six or seven of us out there, not a life jacket between us. You can just see that happening nowadays. Yeah, that's, uh, but uh, yeah, it was it was good, good times. I seem to remember when I was at the school, there had been about 33, 35 pupils, and the only reason that sticks in my mind is say, uh, Janet, I used to do the dinners. Would I can remember the numbers were chalked up each day, however many, and virtually everyone was having school dinners then. So, so. Um, yeah, it was about the 35 mark, and my father reckons it was in the 50s when he was there in 1940, early 50s. And but before his time, with the Glasgow, well, they called them the Glasgow orphans, but they were actually uh, evacuees during the war from Glasgow, and they reckon there was up near 80 kids in Edinburgh in primary now, and uh, and here we are. 2020 and well my wife is the, the teacher in the school and has been for a number of years now and it's the first time it's ever 
reduced to the low teens in, in a single teacher school. So, yeah, it's uh, we could do uh, could do with young families moving into the village. We do love being next to the school. Yes, and yes. we're a bit horrified to find it might shut because of the lack of children. We're a bit old to do something about that. Perhaps you could get on to it. <laughs> <laughs> I was maybe quite lucky um, to be one of the few pupils in, in my generation in Edgerton that never received the belt from your grandfather, which, which it, it didn't happen often, but I think those that got it knew about it. So, but uh, I have great memories of Edgerton Primary School. Wherever I'm cutting in Edgerton, I can guarantee within 10 minutes of me starting, be a red kite up here. Now in the last 20-30 years we've only been in farming more environmentally as I say using hardly any sprays nowadays we've planted thousands of trees both my father and myself and my son have planted uh, especially in the last 20 years native and broadleaf trees planted hedges several hundred metres of hedges down here, which it, it suits us, it, it's, it's shelter for, for cows as well, but it, it's, it's um, nesting places for birds, wildlife corridors for, for mice and, and uh, little beasties. It's, you know, we're, we're, we're sharing this, this world, we're only here for a, for a wee while, so if you can leave it in a better way than you found it that's a good good thing to aim for that's all you can do really well we've lived in lots of places in new zealand so broadly speaking it is a bit cooler here <laughs> that's something we can't help noticing it's not too bad even in the south of the South Island, you might get a good frost, say 16, 18 degrees of frost, but then you'd have a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't have the dark like you hear here. No, there's much more dark here. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't like that. But apart from that, I actually find the Scottish people have a sort of similar friendly, can-do attitude. So I feel very at home here. I think all in all that there there are lots of similarities, but we're very conscious that Scotland is a different country. Both myself and my grandbrother were were still in your mind. You're still in your twenties, but that's a long since long since that's happened, and you find you're it's just that bit harder now as years go past. My father say you know, he was driving tractors up to about four years ago. He's uh, he still uh, he still tells us where we're we're going wrong and, and keeps a, an eye on the on the place. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't do anything else. Even in the worst of winter weathers, it's, it's still a pleasure coming down here. It's so quiet, it's a, kind of an isolated spot. Yeah, I've been, been working full time on the, on the farm since about nearly 30 years now, you know, well, 25, 30 years on the, but yeah, it's 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 great um, because I suppose working in the croft, you're 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 out surrounded by this beautiful parish that it is Edward. It's uh, quite lucky in, in some ways. <laughs>